Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Akabane101, and this is going to be an unedited guide on how to extract the Class 2 reactor from the Gecko commercial grade ship. Not the Gecko industrial ship, that's a whole other beast. And you don't need to be a crazy high rank. We're only rank 6 at the current time. And uh, our equipment isn't particularly the hottest. I mean, we don't even have all the upgrades on our cutter. However, if you are interested in checking out what it's like to be high grade, uh, you'll get the split saw increased cut grade on free play. So if you want to see what that's all about, you can actually precisely cut out holes in the exterior of the ship. But we're not going to be doing that here. So we're going to do it as if we don't have that upgrade, which we don't because I'm only rank six. As you can see here, anything that's lit up in bright yellow is what upgrades I currently have. So if you're roughly around here, you're perfectly fine. Really the biggest thing is the O2 capacity. That helps quite a lot. Um, but we're still going to have to refresh our O2 halfway through at around the 8 minute mark. Um, so just keep that in mind as we go into it. And day 1 will be specifically focused on extracting this device. It should roughly take you 10 minutes or less, uh, depending on your skill level. Uh, but as I'm explaining how to extract it, it's going to take us roughly the entire 15 minutes. Because I want to walk you through everything. How to get the keys, how to deal with the coolant system, how to deal with the fuel system. Uh, whether or not you have keys or not. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the one that has maybe the least amount of problems. This one has, like, one electrical minus to it, which is, you know, not great, but that's okay. We'll jump on in, and let's go extract this reactor from this gecko. Should be a lot of fun. Alright, load it on in here. Now, each vessel has a hatch on either the top left or the top right. Uh, normally, vessels before this only have one in the sides, but, you know, they want to mix things up here in Shipbreaker and make you very confused. It took me a solid two minutes to figure out where the uh, hatches were on the top when I started uh, this for the first time. So we're floating down here and we can see that the door below us is closed, which means that we need to pressurize and fix up the vessel here. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out this door. And it's dangerous to go in, so we are going to depressurize the vessel. And then open up the central door, because this is where usually a key would spawn. Well, I say usually, it's a very, very, very low chance for it to happen. But it's the only spot where I've actually seen it appear. And now that this is done, we're going to have a few more pressurized areas to deal with. Oh god, probably hit the brakes there. Make sure you're holding onto the side of the, the building when you're, you know, doing all this stuff. And just gotta be a little bit careful, but we want to peek in here. Maybe there's like, you know, these little data devices or something like that. Really what we're looking for is keys. We're not looking for anything else other than keys. But, you know, it's nice to get the data modules because they can give you a few more perk or search slots. And uh, just in case you're wondering where they were, this is the area near the pilot area of the ship. Ship is currently depressurized. We're pretty lucky that the uh, pretty much everything in here is open now, which is quite lucky. Usually there is still a few pressurized areas. Uh, this is where you can actually use your keys. I believe you can pull them from other ships and come over here to the thruster vent control system. Put your keys in there and jettison all the fuel out safely without having to remove the hubcaps and also having to remove the thrusters from the rear. Um, but don't worry, the way that we're doing this is perfectly safe and you don't have to worry too much about not having a key. So don't fret. There is our lovely Class 2 reactor. It is quite beautiful. Don't know if it's easy to see with or without the light, but regardless, there it is. It's totally okay to be close to it. You can even bust out the glass and, you know, float and touch it with your hand if you really wanted to. It's perfectly safe as long as the plating is there. Let's go ahead and rip out the engine um, coolant system. This is currently attached to the reactor, hence why we're doing this. Otherwise, this will explode when we disable the piping system going into the reactor. Uh, and that has now dealt with the coolant system. The way that I was doing that, by the way, is I was just holding left mouse button and then right mouse button uh, at the same time to reel in the item. We got really lucky here. There's tons of O2, so we're just going to grab one as we uh, float on up into Limbo, which is the area between the uh, in central part of the ship and the external part of the ship, as I like to call it. There's a fuse over there if you want to grab it and get electrocuted. If you have some uh, electrocution... Uh, safety or hazard safety stuff on your suit, then sure, go ahead and grab it. I wouldn't recommend it otherwise because it could zap your suit and be a little bit annoying when operating these uh, materials. And uh, just look at that. Look at that beast. That sexy, sexy beast that we're about to rip out of this lovely ship. 
So here are the thrusters that we need to deal with. Uh, don't be fooled. Do not use these emergency thruster overrides. There is an other way to jettison the fuel out of the back of the ship without having to worry about, you know, blowing everything up. Because as you can see, it says, warning may cause rupture in fuel line. And uh, we don't want that to happen. We want to get rid of these big boys in the back. And the only way to do that is to remove the hubcaps. Now you may be wondering, how do I know if there's fuel in the lines or not? Well, they are glowing purple, which is really huge. Also, you can listen to the fuel inside of them if you touch them with your hand. You can feel the vibrations going on. And then there is this coolant pipe that we disabled, which is not glowing. This is what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like when there is nothing in the coolant line. Okay, so we want to get out of here, and the way to do that is to cut open one of the engine blocks on the side here. There we go. Just uh, chill out on one of these explosive pipes and fire off an explosive weapon, and we'll rip out the side here. Oh, there we go. I kind of blasted my booty back. There we go, much better. And we'll throw this into the barge. This is really the only entrance piece that we need to get back inside. Again, it's going to be a little different every time. Like, uh, I was kind of confused there as they were on the top. Usually there's one, the bottom one, the top, but that's okay. And we can now move over to the hubcaps. So these guys, you can use your splitter tool on the back and uh, cut precisely these little attachments here. You should be used to these from previous ships that we've dealt with that had a single one of these thrusters. But essentially, you just got to cut each individual one of them. If you're really worried about... Uh, cutting into the hull on the back, then you can go for the more precise singular laser. Either one works, either one will have the exact same result. And once you have your hubcaps extracted, I recommend just kind of pulling them above the ship. We can always throw these into the processor on day two or whatever. The game does save where you put everything, uh, no matter how minuscule it is. Just don't yeet them too far, all right? Because they'll just fly away into who knows where, and uh, you'll never get them back, and the game will yell at you for it. Uh, so here is our access to these thrusters here in the back, but we can't pull them out just yet because we still have to detach them from the fuel line, which the way to do that is using our lovely cutting tool, because as you can see, they're still lit up, which means they're still fueling them. So we're going to be cutting out these purple boxes here in the middle. And this will allow us to get rid of all the fuel from the fuel lines without accidentally spilling all the fuel everywhere and having them explode. Now, you might get lucky. You might be able to hit the switches and then nothing happen, right? No ruptures whatsoever. But in this current case, just disabling those little attachments to these boosters in the back, these uh, thruster class twos, um, has removed all the fuel from the pipelines. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's a bug. Hopefully they don't patch it. Don't tell the devs. Hopefully the devs don't watch this video. But then, we're able to, essentially, uh, pull these thrusters out the back. Now, you don't have to do this part, but, you know, why not? It's a free, you know, 1.35 mil. So, we'll just pull this out gently. We have 14 tethers to use anyway, so it's always nice. Pull this all the way out. Get that going down. Try avoid uh, sending these towards the middle two arrows, because that's where our reactor is going to go. But you can see we have a little bit of extra time here, so we might as well spend it just getting a bit of extra dollar bills. And these ones are definitely worth doing. If you're going to be, like, you know, spamming these missions and just doing the extraction, I highly recommend you extract these guys because they are worth their weight in gold. Alright, and we'll throw this one into the side. And again, if you need to use extra tethers or something like that, it's totally okay. There is nothing wrong with using extra tethers. Especially if you need to go refill your oxygen, which we will need to do momentarily. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Alright, I think we should be able to do that. Ooh, a little bit dangerous. There we go. Don't do it the way I did it, because that was oof, that was a bit monka s, but that's okay. Now we have access back into our lovely ship. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. And uh, now we're going to need to detach the ship, uh, this central part. Which is huge, by the way. Like, let me just show you. You'd think it'd be just this one little rectangle here, but no, it goes all the way up. All the way to the top here. It's kind of a nightmare, and I am not a big fan of it. But we have to remove all of it just to uh, pull out and extract the reactor. 
Oh well. Gotta live with the punches, right? Or roll with the punches, whatever the term is. So these are gonna be the nodes that we need to effectively disable. And allow us to perfectly extract this here reactor, which would be super, super nice. Which will be on the top and the bottom. Uh, we don't really need to do these inner ones, I don't think. Actually, no, we do, because we need to yank out the central piece. We don't need to do the full thing. Uh, but we do need to make sure that we're detaching it from the rest of the ship. Oops, and that's this part right here. There we go. Now that that's detached, perfect. There's still more stuff down here, of course. And make sure not to be uh, using the split cutter, because you could accidentally hit one of the fuel cells. Or if you hit the pipeline, the pipe can sometimes still have fuel in it, start sparking off and jettisoning out fuel, and later exploding into all the canisters, the coolant system, the engine. Trust me, it's happened before. I am talking from past experience. It is quite nasty, indeed. Alright. And, uh, just to be safe... Well, actually, you know what? We're already detached from the thing. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna exit through the back of the vessel, because the whole plating system has been removed. And we're just gonna be very precise the top fin here is going to go straight back into the wall. Yes, these got to go into the processor later, but trust me when I say it's better just to do this right now. And the whole vessel, that little part there that we needed, is going to be yanked out and thrown against that wall. And I'm going to go get some oxygen before I die, which would be most unfortunate. Just reorient myself here. Five minutes remaining in this shift. Plenty of time. We wrap. Alrighty. Oxygen reserves are critical. We don't even need more tethers, we just need oxygen, so we're gonna come right on back, and by the time we get back there, our reactor is gonna be almost ripe for the taking. We need to deal with the pipe system, and I'll show you the safest way to deal with the piping. There we go, it looks like it, you know, we haven't even touched the vessel, really. And there you go, lovely. Nicely extracted exterior. Uh, we just need to pull out one of these metal bars, which are always a little bit of a pain. They also like to wig out. Just kind of send it over here. Maybe it'll bounce nicely into the thing. Who knows, right? There you go. And disable the tether. Okay. Uh, so now we need to cut the pipeline from the direct reactor unit, as you can see with this square here. Wow, it actually bounced in. That's awesome. Uh, so we're going to disable this square. You can see it in yellow with the scanner on. Now that's been disabled. We need to now start disabling these pipe lines. Now, here's the thing. You can cut them, but if you use your split cutter, I've said this before, it will potentially cause a reaction in the pipe system. When using the precise cutter, which eva uh, evaporates them or eviscerates them or whatever you want to call it, um vaporizes, there you go, it will essentially cause there to be no problems. Just be careful that you don't catch on fire from your own thruster, because it can definitely happen. This is probably the most time-consuming part, or most tedious part, I should say. Here we go. One more hubcat, please. And then I think we have one more little bit of piping here to go. All right, and that's our extractor free. Oh god, as I bump into it. And then we'll just uh, grab onto a piece of the outer shelling. All right, and make sure that the reactor is clear for departure, which it looks like it is. If it's not, you might need to take out one of these bars, which is totally easy. You just use your precise laser beam, but in this case, we don't need to do that. So we'll try and get the center of mass, and we will aim it right down to this square here, right below the central arrow. And it should yank out nicely. And we'll have to keep in mind, make sure it says salvage class two reactor is completed. If it's not, there is an easy fix. You can just rip off the doors and then throw it in, but it should pop out nicely. And there we go. Salvage secured. And that's the reactor there. Not even deteriorated one bit. 
And again, if you were to have, say, problems there, you can actually rip off these doors if you need to, and you can throw them into processing if you want. I don't know. <laughs> and then, uh, essentially, once you rip off enough of these doors, you'll be able to yank out the reactor if, uh, for some reason, it bugged out and didn't want to go into there. And there you go. In uh, less than 15 minutes, we precisely ripped out the reactor. You can grab the rest of the stuff in there now, too, like the explosives, toss them into the barge now that you have full access to it. And it honestly looks like we barely even touched the vessel, right? If we were to fly even above it, really doesn't look like we did a whole lot. Yeah, sir, there's a couple of the hubcaps that we yanked out. And if you fly right above it, you'll see that the rear central bit has been cut and removed. One of the engine thruster things on the side have been removed. But other than that, barely did any damage. And we can now focus on removing the entire hull. So moving on from here, I'd recommend rip apart the external hull on day two. And then on day three, focus on the internal hull. And that'll be that. Let's go exit out, though. A little bit early. Just so I can show you how much money we made. So just from extracting those items, we made 4.45 million. Uh, which is awesome. 4.450 million. Whatever. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, really, really powerful stuff. And uh, I hope this has helped you guys. If it has, consider giving a like and uh, check out some of the other content on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all next time. Take it easy.